G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. All right, well, hasn't the market taken a turn? <laughs> and of course, straight after I do my video and I say, you know, I think Bitcoin's really found some support at that kind of $54,000 level. And look, at the moment it is kind of holding, but gee, this is just getting lower by the minute and, you know, gas prices are going up. And I think that is mainly people sort of jumping into stable coins getting out of altcoins and things like that but look i could be wrong uh i don't know anything 100 percent 100 percent for certain but that's what i think's probably going on but look this was literally uh 2.1 trillion dollars only minutes ago and now it's getting down to nearly 2 trillion and i think we're going to go under the 2 trillion dollar mark uh based on what i'm seeing at the moment but again you know <laughs> The market will do what the market will do, and I, just because I think it's going to go down, it'll probably turn around and do something completely different. So we'll just have to wait and see. But yeah, gas price is super high. Bitcoin dominance has actually risen, so it's back above 50%. So, you know, maybe what I was talking about before might happen is that everything's going to dip, but people are going to start piling into Bitcoin, and Bitcoin gets on a big run, and all the profits taken from uh the altcoins over this little kind of altcoin season that we had will go back into Bitcoin, maybe. I, I, look, I have no, uh, you know, guaranteed sort of clues that are, are about to happen. It's just things that I'm seeing and, you know, I'll just get on here and give my opinion. If you like the opinion, sweet, go down below and hit the like button. And if you don't, we'll go down below and tell me why you don't like it. <laughs> you know, I can work on making better content if that's the way you feel. But let's have a look. Um, I mean, it's a bloodbath at the moment. There's a lot of red. The last seven days, some things have made money, you know, particularly Dogecoin and some other coins. But, geez, things are taking a tumble right now. And, you know, we all got a bit hyped about the Coinbase IPO and there was, you know, a pre-pump, but then it's just basically been followed by a dump. So maybe that wasn't the catalyst that we were all kind of hoping for. And, look, the market is overheated and we're going to have a look at the charts very, very shortly. So, uh, you know, a correction is not, you know, it's not the end of the world. Like for me, I bought some old coins from some profits that I took yesterday and they're down 20% from when I bought them. Am I panicking? Am I getting ready to sell everything? No, absolutely not. I've still got money on the side. What am I going to continue to do? I'm going to continue to buy these dips when, uh, in my opinion, never financial advice, we're not at the top of this cycle yet. Of this little cycle within the bigger cycle, yeah, maybe. Maybe we've got to see some more downsides getting down into the 40,000s and maybe even down into the 30,000s for Bitcoin before we see the next leg up. Again, I have said maybe this is going to be like that 2013 cycle. But either way, I don't think we're at the top. I think we've still got a couple of more months at the very least of upside to go. And look, we could go into a multi-month kind of downward scale where you know it just kind of slowly dips off and dips off and we'll have a look at the monthly chart as well because that's kind of going to give us a bit of an indication of where things are as well but let's have a look all right sees a lot of red in the last 24 hours has anything really pumped i mean we can see dogecoin has <laughs> that's up 18 percent so stacks has really been doing well i keep getting notifications about that that stacks is going up so they're doing quite well binance coins up makers up but Excuse me, got a yawn. Oh. Is this going to last? And are we just going to see, you know, much bigger downsides in the market? Definitely possible. Definitely possible. What's dumped the hardest, though? What's really struggling at the moment? Because a lot of things seem to be struggling. You earn finance. I mean, boom. 20%. <laughs> that's going to hurt if you bought the top. But anyway, it is what it is. Uh, Neo again got really smashed, but they're still up. They were doing quite well in the 24 hours, sort of previously. IOST, Nano, Kasama, Thorchain, Uma, and I mean, look, these are all 20% sort of losses. Uh, so they are quite substantial, and I mean, it just keeps going, going down. Everything's you know basically dumping, sort of 15 to 20%. At the moment, I mean, Synthetics Network, this really hurts. I've got some more Synthetics Network, uh, and yeah, it's down 19% since I got it yesterday. And again, look, it may go down even lower. But again, what's my strategy at the moment? I'm going to buy this dip. I'm going to buy it until it gets to the bottom, because I don't think this is, uh, you know, the, the start of the next bear market. Could it be? Sure, anything's possible, but, you know, it's just a healthy retracement. 
it's not healthy for people who bought the top and are just you know completely getting wrecked at the moment no but for anyone else who's been in for a while you're probably just really losing some unrealized gains probably not losing profit i mean these prices you know they were they haven't been this low since earlier this year that's all it is is we're getting down to prices from earlier during the year and you know again could they go down a whole lot lower yes only time will tell we're going to have to wait and see but a healthy correction is going to shake out the weak hands and that's what it is it is literally a healthy correction it's going to shake out the weak hands those that just can't stomach this kind of stuff those who are just jumping in to get a quick you know i'm going to double my money in a week or whatever a couple of days and i'm going to get out well that's what happens when you try and do things like that you know you're going to get wrecked and again for me that's why i you know i've repeated this over and over again on my channel i am an investor not so much a trader it's not that i don't try and do any swing trading and stuff on occasions i do sometimes it works sometimes it works really really well and other times it completely doesn't work and i i get wrecked for a short amount of time and all i have to do is either accept the loss which i have on occasions or generally i just go right out well i got to hold this coin for you know another couple of weeks to another couple of months and generally if i've held long enough i end up in the profit and that's again generally what i do but there are occasions where i've sold for a loss and i regret it uh xrp really kind of got me and i spoke about the other, that the other day the highest i bought xrp for was 54 cents uh, and I sold it at basically 19 cents when the cheapest I bought it was about 20 cents. <laughs> I sold it for a loss uh, and a you know somewhat substantial loss. But again, I took that money, put it into other altcoins, and I made all that back. But if I simply had have held XRP for long enough, I mean, even though it's down quite a lot now, it's a dollar 24. That's still almost you know one and a half times uh, the price that I paid for the highest amount of XRP that I bought. So again lesson learned all right so we saw the gains uh there were some again let's have a look there's definitely some you know 20 percent for stacks nearly 20 percent for doge but then everything else there's only a couple actually in the top 100 there's only four gainers at the moment uh and you know two of them are quite low but then the losses i mean boom 20 percent, 20 percent, and this could continue for days to weeks to months that's just something we need to keep in mind i'm not saying that is what's going to happen but again i've always got a all right this is what i think is going to happen that's my plan a but what happens if i'm wrong then i got plan b and sometimes i might even have all right if i'm really wrong what's my plan c you know do i have to quickly get out not that uh, i've ever really jumped on plan c except for with xrp and like i said just spoke about that that was wrong but what i've found is like 2017 uh, into 2018 you know again turned a couple of hundred dollars into a couple of thousand you know within you know five months later i kept thinking it's going to bounce back it didn't it got down to its lowest so you know turned it into 330 dollars but i held I never sold any of that. I swapped some coins around. So 800 to 4,200 down to 330, $350. And now that same, you know, 800 that fluctuated to 242, fluctuated down to uh, $330 is now worth about $5,000, $6,000. So I just had to hold long enough. And again, that was, I was lucky. I was in some, you know, at least reasonable projects, mainly Bitcoin and a bit of, uh, ethereum litecoin and what it was uh knc yeah so kyber network so yeah anyway and again that's you know sort of five thousand dollars that i got now if this market has a good retracement that's going to turn into you know probably two and a half thousand dollars maybe even two thousand dollars but that's still up on the eight hundred dollars that i originally put in so you know investing is just the easier way trying to time the market that's the harder part but again i don't think we're anywhere near the end just yet i think there's more upside to go we just have to we might have to go through a couple of days to a couple of weeks maybe even another month or two of it getting lower and lower before we get that next uh, upside and again you can try and you know sell now if you're still well in profit sell and hope to buy back in cheaper but what i found is an, uh, at least somewhat regularly when i try to do that the market bounces right as i sell and then i never get to buy back in cheaper so for me i'm just simply holding and i'm going to continue to dollar cost average into the projects that i really like and have done well even if this continues to go down for another month or two but obviously 
if Bitcoin gets below 30 something thousand dollars, I'm just going to accept that I completely missed it. And maybe that is, you know, we're in a bear market and I didn't know. And I'm not going to sell things for a loss. I'm simply just going to hold those coins and I'm going to wait for the next cycle, whenever that may be. Because I'm sure I'll, you know, at least make the money back that I put in or just make more than where it will be at when Bitcoin's, you know, possibly below $30,000. That's my strategy anyway. It's never financial advice. You make your own mind up. I can only go by, I can only go by what has worked for me up until now. But again, I think, you know, yep, we can definitely go down lower, but I don't think it's the bear market. It's just a bit of a bear sort of cycle within a bull market. A, a healthy retracement is what I'd rather call it, not a bear cycle, because a bear cycle is yeah, different. All right, let's have a look at the charts and we can have a look. So currently, Bitcoin's dropped about 20%. That's sort of where we are from the peak high down to the peak low. Now we're not quite there yet, we're about here. So we're sort of still holding that kind of $54,000, $55,000 level. So we have had a 20% retracement. So that's a pretty decent retracement. Now we're just waiting to see whether this holds. But once we get rid of that, we can see here's the green line. So we are under the 50 day moving average. Now we haven't really dipped below the 50 day moving average in quite some time. So this is where we are right now. When was the last time that we dipped below the 50 day moving average? So it was way back 3rd of September 2020. We dipped below and what we can see is the 100 day moving average held extremely well there. So that was the last time. So let's kind of go to where we are now. Here's the 100 day moving average. That means Bitcoin needs to get down to nearly $40,000. 49 ish $48,000 uh, and will we you know go down there and bounce and hold this now we haven't touched the 200 day moving average pretty much at all this Bitcoin cycle we did once very very early on and then we haven't touched it traditionally in previous bull markets Bitcoin has come down and bounced off the 200 day moving average at least probably I think it did about two or three times in the 2000 sort of 17 16 bull run came down and bounced off it at least three times we've only done that once in this cycle so will we come down and make it here i don't know i don't think there would be enough selling pressure to get down this low i think big institutions will just buy this up particularly at about the 100 dollars level and between the two a 200 day moving average sorry not 100 200 day moving average and the 100 day moving average i think there'll be heavy accumulation in there by institutions and it'll just be nearly impossible for it to be pushed down that low but look never say never we'll have to wait and see but again for me i am just buying the dip that's what i'm doing i don't think this is the end even if Bitcoin were to come down to here to 33,000, I am buying that dip. I literally, I'll be buying it. And if I'm wrong and I've missed this peak cycle and Bitcoin comes down to, I don't know, 15,000, 13,000 or something, guess what I'm doing? I'm going to continue to buy. I won't be buying altcoins while this is plummeting down. I'll be getting into Bitcoin because it's going to get hammered the least and also Ethereum. But once I see that we have finally found a bottom wherever it is, that's when I'll be starting to buy back into the uh, altcoins and things like that because they will do the best. I'll buy Bitcoin on the way down and I'll be buying altcoins uh, sort of on the way up because they will perform better. But again, that's me. You do you. It's never financial advice. Uh, and, you know, there's probably going to be plenty of people who tell you that that is uh, not the best way to do things, but that's just the way I'm going to do it because I think that is the way that works best for me. All right, moving on. So, yes, we're having a retracement, but are things really that bad? So Rothschild Investment buys $4.75 million worth of shares in the Grayscale, Grayscale Ethereum Trust. The Chicago-based asset manager is expanding its crypto portfolio by acquiring more shares from Grayscale's Bitcoin and Ethereum Trust. So the asset manager Rothschild Investment Corp has acquired 265,302 shares from the Grayscale Ethereum Trust, which is worth $4.75 million but it's also bought an additional 8,000 shares of the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, which uh, now owns a total of 38,346 shares. It's going heavy into 
uh, Ethereum. What does that tell you? I mean, they've gone really heavy into Ethereum. Still buying some Bitcoin, so they're happy to buy Bitcoin, but just jumping into Ethereum. They might be considered smart money, ladies and gentlemen. So again, for me, I have a lot more Ethereum than I do Bitcoin. Uh, and I'll continue to buy more Ethereum uh, and more Bitcoin as well. But I, I do like uh, Ethereum's gains over the longer term. Not over the so much short term. I think Bitcoin could definitely outperform it. But in the sort of longer term, I think the upside for Ethereum is so much more. But I wouldn't put everything into Ethereum. Because Ethereum still hasn't got, uh, what you call it, Ethereum 2.0 rolled out. There's all these scaling issues. There's other you know, platforms that are kind of catching up to it and, you know, could possibly take it over. I don't think they will, but it's possible. Hence why I wouldn't chuck everything into any one thing. That's, you know, that's that's a big call to put all your money into one single kind of thing. That's, yeah, that's that's out there. And look, some people have done it and it's worked extremely well for them, but a lot of people have done that and it hasn't worked so well for them. So, you know, you make your own mind up, but this to me says that you know, Ethereum is really the better buy at the moment because this is where a lot of smart money is going. I'm not saying no smart money is going to Bitcoin, it is, but gee, Ethereum just has so much more to offer at the moment if it can live up to the promise uh, and that's really what it comes down to. And Bitcoin's still a little bit the same. It hasn't you know, fully lived up to its complete promise. It hasn't been able to scale just yet. You know, It's still got transaction fees and they get blocked up and all the rest of it when things get really heated. So even they've still got work to go. You're basically an early investor in crypto at the moment and we are investing in a bit of a promise, not a, a finished product, even though Bitcoin's, you know, some people might say it's sort of finished. It's not because it hasn't scaled yet. It's still got to do that. And again, we talk about the Lightning Network, you know, and all this kind of stuff. Lightning Network works, so, you know, we've seen it, but does it work to a mass scale or is there something else that needs to come after Lightning to again scale it even higher for that true worldwide adoption? Because we've seen it works uh, well on, you know, the kind of, scale the bitcoins at now but again i don't know if lightning is enough to do it for worldwide for every you know person out there to suddenly get into bitcoin i'm not sure lightning network can do it all so we'll have to wait and see but very very interesting that rothschild investments bought a whole stack of ethereum all right cardano so they've still got more to go and you know again we're we're, we're investing into a, a promise an idea we're not investing into finished products at the moment most of the things that are coming out, they they have roadmaps for things that they still need to do. And look, in all fairness, they should always have a roadmap. There should be more updates coming and all the rest of it. But a lot of these projects, they're anything but a finished product. So Cardano's uh, upcoming Alonzo update pushes uh, ADA price despite a major delay. Now that has changed since this came out. It's actually uh, gone down. Uh, like most coins, but we read on. So the Cardano Foundation is led by Charles Hoskinson, the founder of Cardano and also the co-founder of the Ethereum blockchain. On April 6th through his YouTube channel, he discussed Cardano's roadmap covering the next four years in a video titled Some uh, Musings about the roadmap. So, you know, it, it, none of these projects should ever be completely finished. There should always be a further roadmap. But what I'm saying is that they have a long way to go before they're sort of close to the finished product. And even when they're a finished product, again, they should be continuing updates. Things are always changing and they need to continue to change and evolve. So again, in these musings, he mentioned that although the Cardano developers are working on solving the scalability issue, so working on, they haven't solved it, and Cardano's approach to it, he will only turn his attention towards this issue once the Alonzo update has been completed. The scalability phase of the Cardano roadmap is coming up next, following the completion of the Gogan update. So again, Gogan hasn't even been done. They haven't got smart contracts going and all the rest of it. So even Cardano, and there's a lot of hype around it, it's a promise at the moment. It's not a finished product. They still have scaling issues and all sorts of stuff that they need to get through. Same with Binance Chain. Yeah, Binance Chain works now. Uh, well, now that's great, but imagine all of a sudden the entire world gets in. Can it still work like that? I'm not sure and we don't know and they don't even know. So just be mindful of you know this whole crypto space. You're not investing in a finished product. 99% of all of them, I don't know any that are actually a finished product. 
they've, they've still got a lot of work to go to get to that mass worldwide adoption. All right, NFTs. Seems there's uh, some scammy stuff going on. So an impersonator is auctioning off a fake NFT, says Fairy. He's asking Rarible for help with flagging the account. So Shepard Fairy, the artist responsible for the Obama Hope poster, says an imposter account is selling his work as an NFT. Now the work is Kurt Cobain, Endless, uh, Nameless. So this is it here. Now he says the imposter account is selling his work as an NFT. And that is the problem. I mean, you could go uh, onto... You know, Google Images at the moment, find something and just turn it into an NFT. Now, it doesn't mean you actually own it because someone else actually owns that artwork, but that's the problem. You don't know if it's the actual person who made the artwork or someone else just simply selling it. And too bad if you rush out and buy this thinking, oh, it's the actual artist themselves who's done that to find out it isn't uh, and it's a fake because here we can see this is the first this is the first part of it you know nfts how do you know you're buying the legit thing from the real artist unless they've got a specific website that you can go to and all the rest of it then different story but otherwise yeah again someone can go and just you know grab some random image and you know use the paint dock and all the rest of it and just make one up and then say you know again Kurt Cobain, you know, endless nameless, uh, this is a real piece and you go out and pay a ton of money for it to find out that the person who actually made this art or at least, you know, a majority of the art piece, there might be some, you know, bits cut and pasted over the top of it, uh, they actually own it and you've bought, yeah, again, a fake. So the NFT space, again, I think there's so much more upside for it but it's still early on. We don't you know, know all the ins and outs of it. So for me, again, I've said this a number of times, I'd rather just invest in the platforms that NFTs are on, i.e. Uh, Ethereum, Engine, things like that, you know, Wax uh, and all that kind of stuff. All right, China isn't winning the CBD, uh, CBDC race. A lot of people seem to think they are, but PricewaterCooper have come out with an article and said that actually there's someone else who's ahead. So China has advanced a lot with its central bank digital currency, but it isn't the most developed project according to a new report. So countries around the world are racing to make a central bank digital currency or a CBDC. But a new report says China isn't actually the most advanced with developing one. And interesting, it goes down here and says a new report by Price uh, Waterhouse Coopers or PwC, the big four accounting firm instead claims that the country with the most advanced CBDC project uh, is in the Bahamas with its sand dollar. All right, there you go. The Bahamas seem to be leading the way. I do remember Algorand was also looking at making a stable coin for one of the countries in uh, the Pacific nations. Uh, South Pacific and things like that. I can't remember exactly who it was, but one of those small island nations, and I think they weren't too far off either. So, but it seems like China's not, uh, you know, as advanced as we sort of thought, and the Bahamas seem to be leading the way. So, very, very interesting. And again, it's most likely going to be some small country that brings one out first, but we'll wait and see. All right. A lot of FUD around, you know, China and, you know, their thoughts on Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies and they've cracked down on them. But, you know, yet the mining pools still continue to run. So I don't think they've really cracked down on them like that because they want to slow the progress and things like that. Absolutely, they do. But there's too much money to be made. Like They make money from those big mining places and they make a lot of money. So why would they want to get rid of something that makes them a whole lot of money? They simply wouldn't. All right, so after the well-known crypto crackdown launched by the Chinese government four years ago, it seems there is now a change in the tone from the country's central, central bank. At least that's what has been suggested recently by the Deputy Governor of the People's Bank of China, or the PBOC. We regard Bitcoin and stablecoins as crypto assets. Uh, these are investment alternatives. They are not a currency per se, and so the main role we see for crypto assets going forward, the main role is in investment alternative. So, yeah, again, it doesn't seem like they're trying to crack down on it because, you know, cryptocurrencies, I think we might have to remove currencies because currencies, they are not. They, they, act, they actually are investments. That's the best way to think of it. You know, can you use them like a currency? 
Yes, you can, but it's more like just trading one stock for another. Or, you know, way back in the days, kind of before there was money, you know, you sell chickens and someone sells, uh, you know, blankets and you need a blanket. So you'd take your chicken and say, all right, I'll give you this chicken for that blanket or, you know, 10 blankets for one chicken or whatever way it was. I know it's a very uh, sort of crude way of talking about how you can trade things, but that's what they are. They're investments and they're a form of trade, but they're not a currency as such. You're unlikely to go, go into a store using your Bitcoin and buy, you know, the local paper and the papers are nearly gone, so or a bottle of milk and things like that. It's not saying there's no ways to do it, but I just don't think that's going to be the use case for any of these, even Ethereum. I don't think you're going to uh, do that in the future because there'll be just other things that will work faster and better. I think you know they are completely right. Cryptocurrencies, we probably need to get rid of the currency part and just call it crypto because stable coins are currencies. They absolutely are, but the other things... They are investments. They're just a new type of investment that we haven't sort of seen previously. But, you know, there's a lot of talk about, you know, everything going digital and being tokenized. And I think that is probably going to be the way of the future. But anyway, that's it for me. So for me, again, look, the market's going down. Let's have a look. Uh, Two trillion uh, and 53 billion. Where are we at now? So it's gone down even more. There you go. 54,000. So we could definitely see some more downside and it could be some substantial downside. I spoke about it before, you know, are we maybe going to come down and test, you know, sort of 48,000, 50,000? Possible. I'm not sure we can get there just yet. There has been a lot of support, uh, you know, sort of around this $54,000 mark. So look, if it breaks, I definitely think we're going to come down and test this sort of 50,000, the 100 day moving average. I think that'll be easy if we start to see, you know, 52 actual candle body closes, not wicks. Wicks are different. But if we see candle body closes sort of coming down into this $52,000 range, then I think it's completely possible we come down and test, you know, even more 47. This is where we sort of saw a lot of support. It was around this kind of $47,000 range. So we may be coming down to 47,000. And is it possible we break that and go lower? Yes, it is possible we go down to here, but I'm just not sure. I think there's going to be a lot of institutions piling in if they see Bitcoin getting down in around the 47000 under the $50,000 range. And again, for me, I'll be buying it. I'll be jumping in. Not so much forty-seven, more about sort of the 45-ish mark. If I see Bitcoin getting down to 44000 45000 that's when I'm starting to go pretty heavy into it. And it Again, I'm always going to have money on the side. If I see Bitcoin at 30, you know, 30 anything thousand, again, 39,000, I will be throwing the kitchen sink at it. I'll sell just about everything I have. Even if I'm wrong and it comes down and continues to go down to 15, 20,000, I know that at some stage in the future, I will make up those gains. It just means I timed the market wrong and basically everyone did. But this doesn't look like the parabolic sort of stuff where a market where a market will generally retrace. This isn't parabolic parabolic stuff. You would need to see, you know, lots more stuff. Let's go back and have a quick look anyway. What does parabolic look like? What does the end of a cryptocurrency market sort of look like? This is what it looks like over here. So this is 2017 where I was just roaring up, absolutely roaring. Everything was green, green, hardly anything red. You know, a couple of days here, but the greens were just massive. We're not there yet. We aren't anywhere near there yet. We've definitely seen some good uh, upside, but again, it's just been kind of choppy. It hasn't been just roaring up with uh, basically very little retracement. We've seen plenty of retracement in here. So for me... I think we have a lot further to go. That's my opinion, though. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Pretty hard to be on that gain train at the moment, and we definitely could see some more downside. But my personal opinion is I'm just buying the dip. I'm not panicking. All right, that's it from me. I'll see you next time.